your top two gets in. It's a it's a one on one or two on one race, and so uh, myself and Commissioner Driehaus are not running against each other. I believe her opponent is here. He is not my opponent. My opponent is someone else. But that's not important. What's important right now is that uh, Hamilton County has been in existence for 234 years. I've had a chance to serve as the Vice Mayor of Cincinnati, a state representative, Deputy Director of Tourism, and I'm from Cincinnati. Grew up, come up out of the public schools, went through high school, International Studies Academy, was class president, went to school in the South uh, because of civil rights. I come from a civil rights background. And I've been before you guys many times. I've been on the Finance Committee at the City, the State, and now I'm the County Commissioner. Uh, with 234 years, too many people have been left behind. People didn't know what the county did, where we're located. Uh, and so I call that taxation without participation. So I ran in the middle of a pandemic. I received 212,400 votes. People risked their life. And we took it very seriously. I got right to work because I have a lot of experience. Experience understanding how to read the budgets, and, but more importantly, how to make sure that the public policy includes everyone. I've been able to get a lot of things done in a short period of time. Many of you know that I am a person of faith and a member of my church for many, many years. And I believe when God gives you an assignment, you take the assignment. And so I got an assignment we had a 513 relief bus at a time when people didn't know where to go, didn't have food, didn't know where to turn. Small businesses on the brink of being closed. Senior citizens didn't know where to turn. We had $158 million that came from the Biden-Harris administration. First time in history that Washington put money to help the American people. But the county had to be the ones to make sure that those dollars and investments uh, got directly to Hamilton County citizens. So I'm very excited to be the founder of the uh, 513 Relief Bus. Over 20,000 plus people have been helped. We've got medical services on the back side. We've got uh, other funds that are available on the front side. We've been from everywhere from Cleves to Avondale. And we've had uh, over 200 stops. It's a new way of doing business, bringing the county services to the people. I'm very excited about that. I'm also very excited that for small businesses, I believe that we have to be a county of small businesses. And so just this week, we just had our first pitch night with small businesses, entrepreneurs, bringing new ideas. We now have an office of small business, one of my initiatives, and we had a office small business day where we had over 2,000 small businesses. We got $17 million of small businesses and grants to help them hold on and hold on tight, because I believe we cannot be of the future for small businesses. Now taxes, property taxes, we don't necessarily, the formula of reevaluation comes from the state, but I will tell you I've been a fighter against high property taxes. Uh, one of the things that was promised to us with the Bingo deal 20 plus years ago, we were supposed to get a 30% rebate. When I came in, it's only been done three times in history. When I came in, we were able to get it done that year, and I'm going to keep fighting for it every single year. But I also put a fund together for um, property taxes, so to help people try to hang on to their homes. We put $6 million to try to hang on while the state gets it together. I also called on the governor and my state of the county to freeze the property taxes until they can get it together, particularly with senior citizens. And then when I met with him one-on-one, -on -one, I told him, freeze him. And he has the ability to do that. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had that yet. I put a $2 million fund for senior citizens at a time when they needed help to be able to pay their gas and electric, to be able to pay their water bill, to be able to fix their homes up. So we've done a lot of big, innovative things. When veterans were attacked, they weren't getting the help they were supposed to be getting. I just got there. This is my first term. For the first time, we had veteran services come before us to talk about what we're doing, and I didn't just talk about it. I also put together the first Veterans Day for Hamilton County, a great American ballpark, where we're supposed to have those ballparks at least four times a year for community days. Never done it in 20 years. We did it, it was open. We had 3,000 veterans there with help that they can get right on the spot. 
And even the vet, Terry Nestor, the judge of the Veterans Court, held court and expunged one of the veterans' records on the spot. So my goal has been we've got to shake it up, we've got to open up the process, and we've got to educate people about what county government does. I've had a, I have a track record over the years of getting stuff done. I'm a fighter for the people, but I don't just fight. I'm able to get things accomplished. And so you'll see on here, I know I don't have all the time in the world, but you'll see the things that, some of the things we've been able to do. And I'm also extremely proud of our newest tourism attraction called the Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame, where over 61,000 visitors have come with no marketing budget. And we've been able to market and get people coming from all over the world. So my goal is to have Hamilton County be the number one county, be affordable. We put $40 million in affordable housing, the most any government entity has ever done. And we had a choice with the money. What do we do with it? We said $40 million. And now we're getting ready to we bring the Henry Break Round on, the, on one of uh, a model that's a national model for disability housing, smart uh, housing with land. It's, it's incredible. The things that we've been able uh, to do. Um, we're also working with the city to get that gun range out of Evendale that was shooting into Lincoln Heights. <coughs> we were a part of this for almost 70 years. We couldn't get it done because there was no money or we didn't have the people there that had the will to get it done. On Friday, October 25th, I told them I want a shovel in the ground. We will be putting a shovel in the ground with a new safety complex, state of the art, in Coleraine Township that will expand our sheriff department with all the new technology so not, no homes will be affected. And finally, get this environmental injustice facility out of Lincoln Heights, Woodlawn, Evendale that has really affected <coughs> babies over the years, blowing out eardrums and those kind of things. So we've been able to do some uh, extraordinary things, but I'll tell you that I've been fighting to change the system that has left so many people behind. So I'm so really excited, <coughs> love to have your support, but you can't do it in one term. We got to go back and complete the work. So that's why I'm asking to be reelected uh, and I've enjoyed uh, my time there, but it's gone so fast. And we've gotten so many things that I can't even, I mean, the pitch night, I mean, that was incredible. Young entrepreneurs, they said, man, we never thought Hamilton County could do it, was one of my ideas. And we were able to see these ideas come to fruition. And a lot of times when you're elected official, you could put something in and it might be 50 years and you never get to see it come to life. So uh, we've been pushing, pushing the envelope, moving it quicker, and trying to change a 234-year system. You got time for a question? Yeah. Or something? Any questions? Any questions out there for for the commissioner? Um. I hope I'm looking at the right. Cause I'm looking too bad. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes gonna be looking weird. Like she's up here. She's down here. <clears throat> um, but also we have a, a Bengals negotiation that's coming up and um, the first thing I did when I got elected was give me the lease. I want to read it. I read it word for word. I have it. I usually walk around with it. The taxpayers got screwed. They voted for two stadiums but then when it got turned over to the county, those who, not, not me because I wasn't here, but those who were not around, they got behind closed doors. And when they got behind the closed doors, all of the fire print was against the taxpayers. We have a deal where the taxpayers assume 95% of all the costs. Gas and electric, water, sewer, all of that, Wi-Fi, $8 million. We assume the cost. And the ownership only puts in 5%. But they get mature all of the revenue. So it's, a, in their mind, a private stadium when it's time to make the money. And it's a public stadium when it's time to pay the bills. This is going to be tough to get out of this type of lease. They, everywhere you turn, they got it locked in, locked step. And the average is 33% that other stadiums that the public puts in is 33%. You look at places like Tennessee, they came in and said, we're going to take the maintenance costs off the taxpayers. We have all the maintenance costs. So the older the stadium gets, like an old car, 
You don't have warranty anymore. So then when the engine go out, you say, oh no, I'm stuck with this. So what we're trying to do for me is one, I want to be more transparent. As we see it, I want you to see it. So you see something different. You saw the consultants come back. You saw it as we saw it. And we had questions. We didn't come back and say, oh, this is the deal. Uh, the other thing um, we're fighting on, they can uh, keep the same deal. Yeah, they, can, they got extensions. Well, they have up to 10 years. They only have to let us know 12 months before the lease ends. So we're trying to do all of our due diligence. I met with the governor to make sure that as they're meeting with Cleveland, because I've been at the state legislature, they give everything up north. And they don't give us what we, we got to fight to get our fair share. So I put on the table early to the governor. Now listen, don't you give everything to Cleveland and don't have anything but crumbs for us. I said exactly like that. So he said he was happy to hear from Cincinnati. So that's good, because now when Cleveland comes, he's gonna say, oh, baby, hold up, what's happening in Cincinnati? The second thing is that NFL, if they can tell us, we, they told me that we couldn't do a watch party. I don't know if it's the NFL, but the people said it was the NFL. It was gonna be free for our citizens, fans, they did it the following year in Detroit. They told us no, and then Detroit did. Now they're back with a watch party. But the difference is they're charging. They're charging the people to come for the watch party. So we have to get a better relationship because the relationship is they walk in and do whatever they want and forget about the county. And I'm telling you, that's been the attitude for 234 years. Certain people come down, I've been seeing it. Certain people come down there, they give them whatever they want right away. Something for the people, ah, oh, we can't do it. And I have been fighting to change that down at the county, that you must respect the taxpayers. They put pay for a name up, we could pay it on a, on a Friday, and it was up on a Sunday, and guess what? The zoning committee of the city didn't meet to Monday. But if you try to put a deck on the back of your house, the zoning gonna come in and say, you can't do it, right? Building inspectors, they ain't got no okay, and they put it up. So that type of attitude has to change. And I'm really fighting on uh, for, the, for the taxpayers. So this is going to be interesting, and uh, uh, we have put on the table for me no, no new taxes, no new local taxes for this. But the NFL's got to put in its real fair share, like they do in other cities. The ownership, you can't be the riches in America and don't put anything in. And you're the riches because of a Bengal deal. They said only because of the Bengal, and you go on this deal, this is the lease is where all the money is. Because if you don't have to pay for rent, you can have your headquarters there. You get all the parking revenue on the game day. You don't have to worry about your gas and electric and your water bill. That's being paid by us. You don't have to worry about the upkeep of the facility. That's paid for by us. Then obviously, all of you around here could be the richest people in America if you had that same deal. So we have to have a more fair and equitable deal we want to keep our teams, keep our sports, but we don't want to bankrupt Hamilton County. We want you to also be able to keep your home. Yes, <clears throat> Thank you for taking a strong stance on that stadium stuff. I'd like to ask you about, <clears throat> do you cooperate with the city on the homeless problem? You know, there was a, um, <clears throat> the city does have a, a fund of funds, which is not doing much, but, do Hamilton County and the city work together? Because really, it's a county problem. It is in the city, but it's really a county problem. Does the county do anything about homelessness? Is oh, there yeah. any? Yeah. We just had um, Flynn. He just came up, and Mr. Flynn did a presentation. Strategies to send homelessness. That's where we send our money, $20 million. So he came up the, uh, this week, I think it was Tuesday. You can probably see it on YouTube to talk about what the goals are, what they're trying to do. The uh, preventive, uh, a lot of the federal funds did not allow preventive care, but they're fighting to change that. Uh, housing, they want to look at the tiny housing and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So we just, we just brought them up. The $20 million that we uh, went with, the $20 million. Is that coming from the county, $20 million, or is that from the federal government? That's from our federal funds. So we qualify for our federal funds. From our federal funds to them. Plus, we get ARPA. 
we had additional okay. ARPA dollars that allowed us to do the temporary housing when they had the hotels and those kind of things. Uh, the outreach uh, folks on the streets with wraparound services, that's new, we put money into that. So those are the things where we call them up because one of the things we want to see is an ROI. Obviously, if the strategy is to end homelessness, then we want to see a decrease in homelessness. And uh, my understanding that it's an increase of 2%, but we've been asking some very hard questions. Very hard questions. But then the other thing I've asked, let's look at, when they think about, when you think about homelessness, he's, one of the things he did say was that people think, of course, substance abuse, that's an issue. But that's not the only reason. Medical bills, people going bankrupt. I mean, there are, so I'm at one of the things we want to have a report on, what are some of the other reasons that people are becoming homeless? And then, of course, our, um, there's too many college students that are also living in their cars. So yeah, we just had that Tuesday, but $20 million that we have to agree to pass through and, and select the people and its uh, strategies. And they're working cooperatively with city funds, those funds, ARPA funds, they all with this particular organization. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, I got on pink 